Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Now that the Bronco has been out for a while, I'm sure a bunch of them are now coming up on the engine air filter service interval. My own Bronco has about 37,000 kilometers on it now. Most of it's today commuter miles, but some off-road and gravel roads since as well. If you have a look at the owner's manual, the listed normal scheduled maintenance interval for the engine air filter is about 48,000 kilometers or 30,000 miles. When it comes to special operating conditions, however, Additional attention needs to be taken with respect to the service intervals, also mentioned in the manual. The engine oil lift computer is designed to calculate your oil change service intervals, not simply by mileage, but also factors in the variables such as temperatures, both engine and fluids, and environmental, percentage and duration of engine load, and other factors such as excessive idling or load speed driving for long periods of time, and various other data. In normal driving conditions, you can expect the oil change reminder to come on somewhere between 12,000 and 16,000 kilometers. In extreme driving conditions, however, the reminder can come on on as little as 5,000 kilometers or 3,000 miles. When we compare the information in the normal driving chart in the owner's manual, we can see that the engine air filter should be replaced approximately every three oil changes, or as I mentioned, every 48,000 kilometers. We're just talking about maintenance procedures with respect to the engine, such as oil and filters, but all scheduled maintenance and inspection checks will need more frequent attention when the truck is put into off-road or extreme use. For example, the spark plugs under normal operating conditions are good for about 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles. Under what Ford sees as heavy duty use, like towing or driving with a rack and cargo on your roof, Ford recommends spark plug replacement intervals of just 96,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles. The owner's manual also has a chart on maintenance items and schedules for when your Bronco is specifically used for off-road and in dusty environments, and you should make yourself more familiar with these special condition intervals and checks if you do a lot of off-roading. So now that we're familiarized with the maintenance schedule and how special driving conditions affect the maintenance intervals, let's go out and I'll walk you through an engine air filter replacement. First step obviously is popping the hood and propping it up out of the way to get access to the air box. Both the 2.7 and 2.3 liter EcoBoost engines use the same filter element and both housings are located inside the passenger side fender. An 8mm socket and a 3 or 6 inch extension loosen off the four self tapping bolts holding the housing cover in place. Alternatively a T35 Torx driver can also be used. If you're someone who really likes to reef down your fasteners, a Torx driver may be the better option as you don't want to rip the threads out of the plastic housing. The inside back bolt is awkwardly placed under the front fender lip but can be easily be reached without the extension. The fasteners don't need to be fully removed, just backed out enough that you see the threaded portion protruding above the housing cover and they'll stay in place without ever dropping out. The inlet snorkel is held in place with a single grommet and push pin. Pry up and remove the center pin and then remove the grommet so you don't lose it. Now carefully remove the housing cover. Inspect the filter area for loose debris before removing the filter element. The filter itself doesn't use a hose clamp, so pry it up on the fender side and lift it free. Once the filter is removed, inspect the inlet for any other debris or dirt. The visible condition of your filter will vary. I always like to take a look at mine for any rips or tears. Elon Musk reportedly claims that the biggest waste in manufacturing is spending hours refining something that you don't even need. So this setup was cleverly designed to eliminate a 20 cent hose clamp. As I mentioned, both EcoBoost engines use the same filter. Mine costs $49 Canadian after tax from my local dealer. You may find them cheaper online, but watch the shipping charge. Since the filter element is wedged into place, a small amount of spray lube on the back side of the housing and at the cap end of the filter makes installing a new element a little easier. Place the filter over the top inlet tube, then press down on the back side until you feel it drop in. Give it a little wiggle just to be sure it's fully engaged. The rubber open end of the filter is pretty rigid so it shouldn't really pinch or catch the lip when installing. 
Now place the housing cover back over top of the air box. The corners of the lid have guide flanges on them to help with the alignment. Make sure it sits square and flush over the housing before hand tightening the bolts. You may be a little concerned that the filter itself has no hose clamp securing in place, which is a first for me. But as you can see on the lid, there is a detent there to prevent the filter from backing itself out. Because the filter is designed to wedge in the place on the fender side, I start the tightening sequence on the inside pair of cover bolts and not with a crisscross tightening sequence. This will help with the cover drawing down on top of the filter element. Once all the bolts are seated, go around and give them a snug turn with the ratchet. The owner's manual states only two pound feet of torque, so don't overdo it. Lastly, drop in the snorkel grommet and drop in the push pin, and then you're all done. So as you can see, an engine filter replacement is a pretty easy maintenance procedure anyone can do with just some basic hand tools, and it's one you don't want to neglect. Before we wrap this up, I'd like to talk a bit about aftermarket air filters and intake kits like cold air performance intakes. A lot of marketing hype and performance figures are used to sell all kinds of performance bolt-ons for cars and trucks. Claims of more horsepower, better mileage, or full page spreads showing aftermarket bling spread all over the engine bay can be pretty convincing to get you to open your wallet. But some discretion should be heeded before going out and adding these products to your Bronco. For example, I've seen an ad for a filter that claimed to flow 17.9% better than the factory filter. Pretty impressive, but how and at what cost? Filtration ability? I also come across another ad saying that the filter stops 99% of the dirt. 99%? So 1% of the air my engine is getting is unfiltered. 1%. My cellular provider dropped the ball 1% of the year. My phone would be useless for over 87 hours. I want my air filter to stop all the dirt entering the engine. So when it comes to my truck, which does and will spend miles on dusty dirt trails, Filtering performance of the air filter will always trump any performance aftermarket claims. Drop-in washable and reusable filter to me makes a lot of sense, but I've yet to see any comparable performance data with regards to filtration rather than just the usual horsepower gains or dyno chart comparisons. When comparing the physical size and surface area of the factory filter to a popular drop-in aftermarket option, you have to wonder how they're able to make more air flow through and provide adequate filtration. Of course, an intake replacement kit can be engineered to house a larger filter and so provide less restriction to the engine. One particular food for thought to me is seeing how both the 2.3 and the 2.7 liter engines use the same filter. Is the bigger motor more filter restricted? Does the 2.3 liter breathe better because the air filter needs to be sized for the larger motor? Maybe performance improvements aren't easily come by with an intake swap on the smaller four cylinder. If horsepower is something you're seeking from your EcoBoost motor, Keep in mind that most claims of power increases from the aftermarket almost always quote peak horsepower figures. Actually, they always quote peak horsepower figures because that's where all the gains come from. And almost always, these peak power numbers come at a cost of low end torque and street ability. Hardly any thought or engineering needs to go into such an add-on, especially on a turbocharged engine. Make the intake less restrictive, bolt on a freer flowing exhaust and get more power. If you take a look at this dyno chart, for example, you can see overlaid on the chart a stock 2.7 liter air filter compared with a popular washable oil air filter and a power core dry filter. If you're not familiar with a dyno chart, engine RPM is usually along the bottom and horsepower and torque scales are along the sides. The horsepower plot is the longer line stretched out towards the right and the torque figures are the other set of lines. Normally you'll see them delineated with a solid line and a dotted line. As is typical, peak power shows decent gains somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 horsepower or so. But if you draw a line to the bottom of the chart, you can see the biggest horsepower gains come way up at 4500 RPM. Clearly, these aftermarket filters are able to flow better than the stock filter. Horsepower is nice to have, and as mentioned earlier, prevalently used in the marketing claims, but torque is the real motivator when talking about engines. If we turn our attention to the left side of the chart on the torque plot, down at the lower RPM scale of things, where most engines spend a lot of their time, we can see the opposite power effect with the aftermarket filters. 
and a steep fall off in torque. If we look at where the power core filter plot begins on the torque curve, we can see it gives up a mass of 50 pound feet of twist just past 2000 RPM. That's significant. It doesn't take back that torque advantage until about 3250 RPM, and it only pulls ahead by less than 6 pound feet at peak output. I don't know about you, but my Bronco doesn't spend a whole lot of time at wide open throttle and between 4000 and 6000 RPM, where you might feel a little more oomph in the seat of your pants with an aftermarket filter. But I bet you're definitely going to miss that bottom end grunt when you're tooling around town or navigating the trails. When it comes to the complete aftermarket intake replacements, such as so-called cold air intakes, again, peak horsepower numbers usually rule the dyno for notes. Great for the advertising department, but maybe not so great for an off-road 4x4. I've learned a long time ago, throwing thousands of dollars worth of engine bolt dons at a vehicle rarely betters what the factory delivers with performance and reliability right off the showroom floor. Well, thanks for sticking around and watching this simple and easy filter maintenance episode. Moving forward, I plan on doing a series of maintenance videos as my Bronco requires them. So if you're not already a subscriber, get on board and we'll see you next time here on The Lonely Overlander.